<coughs> okay, so today you will learn how to use this software, After Effects, to combine all your three renders together. Right, by now, you should have your diffuse sequence, okay, plus your grey shaded sequence, and then finally, plus your wireframe sequence. We are going to use After Effects, right, to link them together, and then produce your first portfolio, uh, 3D modeling portfolio video. Okay, let me just talk quickly about what After Effects is for you all. I understand uh, this week, your first <coughs> experience After Effects. So After Effects is a very advanced compositing software. Now you guys already know how to use Photoshop, right? Okay, you already understand the concept of layers. So the easiest way to understand Photoshop, uh, After Effects is animatable Photoshop layers. That means right, every layer you bring in into After Effects, right, can be animated, can be manipulated, the properties of each image layer, the color properties, can be changed. So it's a very, very powerful tool. It's been around for a long time. I mean, even when I was a student. So when I was a student, right, that was like in the late 1990s. So the first early versions was available back then. Back then it was used more for web applications or simple web videos. Now it can handle film resolution uh, footage. Okay, so it's very easy to learn and pick up. So before I start to assemble these three layers, I will just introduce you guys to the interface again. So I'm going to start another instance of After Effects. Now when you first open up After Effects, right, you see a bunch of windows. Okay, a bunch of panels, and if you do not understand what it is, right, it can be very overwhelming. But uh, once you get a hang of it, right, it is actually quite easy to understand. Now, you guys already know how to use Premiere, right, I'm assuming. Okay, so like Premiere, this is almost like a video editing software, it just, except that it has much more powerful layer editing function. Now, can you actually use this to edit video? Yes, it's possible. Okay, but um, later your layers will become stacked quite a lot. So if you're editing video, of course, and if you want to see everything in the linear line, right, it's best to use uh, Premiere. Okay, so it has this same layout. It's got a timeline at the bottom. Okay, this section at the bottom here, this is the timeline. And also, everything you notice here has tabs. You can actually move them around. So you can click on the tabs and then reorganize your timeline. And also, on the left-hand side, there is this thing called the bin, or the project uh, bin, where you can bring in your elements, your images, your movies, your sound clips, your in you can create individual projects. All will reside in this area here. Okay, let me just see whether I can... Yeah, this section area here. And over here, this is uh, your composition window the center main composition window. Whatever footage you will try to view, right, it will be available or visible here, okay? And then here, the other panels like the filters, different types of filters available for you. Okay, there's a playback button, the preview button, and other information button like uh, what is the color information and the audio information. Now, most of the time, right, you don't have to worry about all those other small windows. Okay, you, let's just try to bring in the first footage first. So we are in a brand new project. Okay, so the project is empty. There's no, um, there's no composition uh, in your project yet. So we need to create a composition. So our composition must satisfy the condition we set for our footage. Okay, first of all, what is the size of our footage? It's HD. So it's 1920 by 1080. Okay, so and it's running at 25 frames per second. So these are the basic information that you need to put in. So go ahead and click on Composition and New Composition. All right. To create a new composition. So this window will appear. And they will ask you to name your composition and specify the size. So you can use the presets there available for you. So I'm going to 
give the composition name, I'm going to call it my modeling portfolio. Okay, and the preset, you can click on the drop down, and you can see that there are a lot of different bunches of presets available for you. So the one that I want to use is this one, HDTV 108.0.25. Okay, HDTV 108.0.25. Do not use the HDV. Eh? Okay, the aspect ratio is wrong. There's something called the <coughs> pixel aspect ratio. The pixel aspect is actually squeezed and stretched. So make sure you choose the correct one. It's HDTV 108.0.25. And if you look at the different resolutions at the bottom, you can see that it actually supports film resolution as well. But since we are not doing film today, okay, we'll be using this one. All right. So set the resolution to HDTV 108.0. Okay, so now we already set the frame rate and then the duration is only 50 frames. Of course, 50 is too short. It's only two seconds. So we're going to set a much longer frame rate. If you put 250, right? That means you're only showing one revolution of your vehicle. So if you want to show the three different uh, frames, you have to multiply it uh, by at least three times. So three times 250. But let's make it easier. We want to have extra time to move the footages around. So we're going to multiply it by four. So four times 25 is how much? Is 100, right? So 100, 1000. So 1000 frames. So duration, we're going to set it to 1000 frames. And then you click OK. So once you click OK, you will notice that right now, can someone let Dagnus in? <coughs> okay, right now we have a composition, an active composition that is open. And you can see that at our timeline is also active now. We can actually see the timeline slider. We can see the timeline navigation tabs. All right. However, there is no footage for us to view yet. Okay, so we need to bring in some footage. So I'm going to bring in uh, footage that is already been rendered. And if you look closely to the left hand side, to the bin, the project bin, right, you can see that there is a composition there now. It states 25 fra uh, frames per second from how many frames to how many frames. Okay, so now we're going to bring in the footage. There are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can click on File and Import File. You can use the shortcut key Control I. Okay, or move the cursor over to the bin here. Okay, another quick way: move the cursor to the bin here and use the right mouse button. Remember, the right mouse button can be very, very powerful in a lot of software instances, not just only After Effects. So, right mouse click on it, and you can see there's a number of options available for you. You can actually create a new Photoshop file. You can actually uh, import file. You can create another composition. Okay, so but we are going to import something in first. Okay, right mouse click, import, file. All right. And you can start to bring in uh, any images that you want. All right, so I have, okay, this is from the IPP one. Let me just go, let me just do something simple first. Just want you guys to get familiar with it first. I'm just going to go to the default libraries and just bring in a sample image. Okay, let's just bring in the desert image and just open. Okay, so right now I got picture. Okay, the desert picture from the default. So I can, but you can see that if you want to see the desert picture onto the timeline, you have to click and drag the desert picture and drop it down on the timeline here. Okay, depending on the size of the image. Okay, if the size of the image is smaller than 1080, okay, it will be smaller than your composition. But if your image is bigger than the composition, okay, like in this case, the top and bottom, it will stretch and fill the entire uh, picture. And then, right now, if you want to see, if you want to zoom out this view, if you look at the bottom of the composition view here, there are a bunch of buttons here that allows you to change like the size, the resolution, 
okay, which camera, you can actually create cameras in After Effects as well, but we will not go into that for today. Okay, right now you can see the zoom is 100%. We're going to reduce the zoom, okay, maybe down to 50%. Uh, now you can see, actually the image is slightly smaller than the full HD resolution. Okay. You can turn on things like the save frame also. Okay, so you can make sure that your titles or whatever is within this cropped area. Okay, so these buttons you can turn on and off. Right. So you can see we have the image here and then we can actually grab the image, click the image and then move it around. Okay. Now let me just show you the this is just a still image, huh? And if you notice at the bottom of the timeline here, the entire image is spread across the entire 1,000 frames. So remember this, every image, single image uh, that you bring into After Effects, you will automatically stretch to the length of your composition. In this case, 1,000 frames. You understand, right? Okay, so if I don't want the uh, image to stretch to 100 frames, you can do this. If you, almost like a video clip, this is representation of the image. If you move your cursor to the end of the clip, you will notice that your cursor will change into this two arrow head slider, like that. Okay, I can't see it when zoom in. You can left mouse click on it and you can shorten the clip. So that if I drag, the, this, is, this big yellow button here is the timeline scrubber. So if I scrub the timeline past this grid, you notice that it will disappear. See that? Okay. So you can do things like that. So you can do things like transitioning stuff and making it disappear. So far we understand this part. Simple to understand. Okay. Now I want to show you the next powerful thing that uh, After Effects can do. I'm going to increase the clip again, maybe to halfway like that. We're just going to play with one simple image first. Uh, okay. So, if you look to the left-hand side of this timeline here, it will show you a lot of properties that you can access for the image. If, and it's kind of similar to Photoshop. If you look to the left-hand side here, you see the eyeball a symbol. Eyeball, you know that it's visibility. When you click on the eyeball, it makes it disappear. All right? Okay, you can lock it. You can apply a mask onto it. Now, there is this button here. If you look very closely, Okay, this one, uh, change the color of the layer. So this is when you have a lot of image layers, then you change the color. There's this button here we can click and you can drop down to expose even more properties. And you can see here, it has a transform property here. If you click on transform, you see even more properties available for you. Now, if you look closely, you see I click the drop down, these drop down arrows, it shows you anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Now, if you look even closer to these symbols, what does these icons look like to you? Anyone? Take a guess. Stopwatch, exactly. So the stopwatch means that anytime you see a stopwatch next to this property, it means it's animatable. You understand? That means I can actually animate these properties. So currently, this image doesn't have any animation on it. So let's do a simple animation. We want to do a position animation. That means I want to move the image from left to right. Okay. Now, clicking on the image right gives you the transform uh, manipulators here. You see these buttons here? You can actually grab on it and then change the scale. Right. If you click anywhere else, okay, do not click on the center here. It, this one is called the pivot point. Okay, this is the, like the axis of the object. So if you change, you can actually change the pivot point by clicking on it. Okay. And if you click on it, you can actually, okay, right now I can't really change on this. Let me see. Oh, I cannot do it. Okay, just now I accidentally double clicked on it. Huh? Okay, watch what happens when I double click on it. Okay, apparently I can't change the pivot point here. If you want to change your pivot point, okay, they call it the anchor point. You have to change it over here. All right. So, if you double click on the image, you will notice that the element here, the layer here, is no longer within the composition. If you look to the top here, it appears in another tab. 
it appears in its own tab called the uh, its layer tab la. all right and you just concentrate on that particular image all right and you will notice there are other properties at the bottom here you can show things like the alpha channels or other uh, image properties of the uh, this particular layer right so if you want to go back to the timeline the composition you have to click on the composition back here again all right so i'm going to manually set up a simple animation so first i'm going to scrub the timeline to maybe 50 frames okay and then i'm going to position my image here then i'm going to click on the stopwatch once now watch what happens if you click on your stopwatch right it shows you these new symbols here this is a keyframe keyframe uh switcher that means you switch between keyframes by clicking the left and right arrow since we only have one keyframe there's no other keyframe to jump to and a keyframe is represented by this yellow diamond all right and notice something when i click on the stopwatch a keyframe will be generated along the timeline here okay now let's do our animation now in order to animation we need to scrub the timeline forward okay maybe up to 450 here and then I'm going to grab the layer and then I'm going to put it here. Now, notice that whenever I change any animatable properties, a keyframe will automatically be generated for me. Okay? So now, if I scrub the timeline, you can animate okay, your image from left to right. Okay? So that is like the super basics of After Effects. And let's say you're happy with this, you want to render it, just go to file okay and then you go and export and add the render queue all right to render the movie now i will not do, do this process i will show you uh how to do this when we do the portfolio composition okay so i'm going to show you the composition that is done by mr david all right so it will be much more complicated looking than this one Okay, so this is the complete one. So you notice that there is a lot of different um, elements that are brought in and then combined together. You can see all of them in different layers. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to replicate this. So those of you who already have your three render elements, you can follow along. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to click on composition, new composition, or you can press Ctrl N. And I'm going to set my preset to HDTV 108.025 and duration 1000 frames. Call this my modeling portfolio. Please name your <coughs> compositions. So right now there's nothing in. I'm going to bring in the render elements. So the quickest way for me is usually I move my cursor to the Project bin, right mouse click, import files. And I'm going to navigate to the folder containing the files. Okay, so I have my different renders available here. Which one do you want to use? One, two, or three? Three. Three, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use the latest one. Now, go and, go and identify the first frame. This is very important. You must identify the first frame of your files. Okay, so I select the first frame. Now, take note of this. Now, After Effects is pretty intelligent. If it notice there are multiple frames with the same name and with a number in increment sequence it will automatically check this for you okay but if it doesn't right please make sure that it checks this for you right <coughs> it can be a targa sequence it can be any image sequence as long as it's got a underscore 001 002 003 and so on you will automatically detect this so in order to make sure you import the correct sequence always select the first frame which is in this case 001 and make sure you import it as footage 
Okay, import it as footage. Do not import it as a still frame because if you install import it as a still frame, there are like uh, 300 frames here, I think. So it will give you 300 images. You do not want that. Okay, so you want to import as a footage. Okay, so I'm going to click on first frame, import as footage, and then go ahead and click open. Now, once you've done that, you'll notice that it has imported the entire 300 frames into the timeline. But you notice that it states, what is the frame rate here? Can you all read? 30 frames per second, which is not correct. We have to go and reinterpret the footage. That means we need to tell After Effects that, hey, I don't want you to play this footage at 30 frames per second. Otherwise, it'll be too fast. Okay, so, or rather, it'll be too, too slow. So I want you to play at 25. So how do you change it to 20, uh, 25? So very simple. Just select the layer, the, the imported footage, right mouse click on it. There is this option called interpret, interpret footage. Okay? And then you click on the main. So right mouse click, interpret footage, click on main. Okay, the shortcut key is here already, Control alt g Right, you can press Control alt g Okay, and then you bring in this in, uh, interpret footage window. So right now, the basic the assumption is that this is 30 frames per second. But no, I don't want this to be played at 30 frames per second. I want to change it to 25. Okay. Now, this step is very important now because if you do not change this, Okay, the length of your footage will not match the composition that you set. Okay, so this is very, very important. So make sure you set it to 25. Um, and this one, okay, this one actually has an alpha. Let me check. You can try to click on pre-multiply. No, this one is not. We have alpha, right? But how come it doesn't detect it? Okay, never mind. I'm going to check the alpha of this by double clicking. Now I, now I want to inspect the footage. So I double click on this layer. And yeah, it already has an alpha. So you don't have to, by clicking on this button here, it will toggle the transparency. OK? So this is very useful because it means that I can actually composite this on my desert background just now, if I want to. Okay, let me just do a quick demo. I'm going to import in the, the desert background. Okay. Remember, I have not placed any footage on the timeline yet. You can see the timeline is empty, right? So we need to go back to your, the timeline window. So you have to go to the top tab here that says composition. Click on it. All right, so now it's empty, right? So let's set up the desert first. So I'm going to drag this. You can actually, actually drag it to the timeline here or drag it straight to the screen here. And then you can manually scale this up until it fills the screen. Of course, if you scale like this, it will be distorted. But if you do not want it to be distorted, you hold on either to the control. I think it's the control or shift key. I can't remember. Yeah. See what I can remember this. Mm. Okay, anyway, to prevent this from being un uh, distorted, right, I think the best way is to click on the drop down panel here, lock the scale, and then adjust the scaling. Okay, let me just reset the scale. Okay, adjust the scaling here, it will be much better. Okay, so right now I fill up the entire background. So now I want to bring in the vehicle. So I just drag the vehicle, you can put it on top of the screen here, and automatically the vehicle will start appear on the desert. Okay, this is just to give you an idea, because we rendered our vehicle with a transparency uh, option. All right? Okay, so I'm going to delete this, and then I'm going to do, do it again. 
but we don't really need that okay so we first we bring in our vehicle into the timeline so we're going to grab the vehicle and then drop it onto the timeline so now we have this rendered feature but you notice that the background is very black and very dull okay so if you do not want the background to be black you have to create a background you can actually create a solid background in after effects if you go to the bin here okay wait i think it's here new sorry the timeline here okay the timeline layer here you can right mouse click you can click on new solid okay and then i'm going to create a white solid and then click ok i'm going to leave everything at default it's going to create a white layer so now right now you notice that the layers right whatever new layers i create will be stacked on top of the the first layer that i place so what happens is this white solid layer is covering my uh, footage so in order to change the sequence right you just simply click and drag it down to the bottom okay so now you can see that the car is on top foot of this uh, white layer now if you find that the white is very plain and boring right you want to have something nicer you can go to photoshop and you can create a gradient okay to make your background look nicer or you can choose a nicer background but please take note uh, do not use black or very dark backgrounds another type of background you do not want to use is a background with a lot of complicated patterns or a background that looks far more interesting than your model okay this one is basic design principles uh. So you want to create a plain but nice looking background. So usually a gradient will be good enough. Okay, so remember this. You don't want to take the attention away from the star of this portfolio, which is your 3D model. Right, so remember that. Okay, so now we've done the first part. We've created one round. Now, there's another trick that you can do. You spend so much time to render this, but your vehicle only turn one round. Let's say you want the vehicle to turn more than once. Okay, we can return back to the tool again, the interpret footage just now. So you can go back to the clip itself. You select the footage, right mouse click on it, interpret footage, go back to main. You can specify how many times do I want to loop this. Currently, it only runs one time. That means your vehicle only spin once. Let's say you want it to spin more than once. You can double it to two times. Then click OK. And once you've done that, you notice that your footage right in the timeline effectively doubled in length. The original length, right, you only spin once and then poop, it disappears because you have to manually extend the length until now it is spinning more than once. Understood? Okay. So this will be very useful for us to adjust things like transitioning. We, will, we can fade this to the next layer. Okay, now we have this one. Now we want to fade to the grayscale layer so let's bring in the grayscale layer so right mouse click import file and we're going to go back to the folders containing the footage okay grayscale so same thing go and select your first frame Make sure that it is a sequence, footage, then open. Ah. Okay. So I've just been informed. Actually, if you click any frame, you'll be fine. Uh, the, the software will detect the first and last frames. Okay, so now once it's selected, again, you can see the interpretation is wrong again. So we need to run the interpret footage. Now, if you do not want to repeat this all the time, if you have a lot of footages that you bring in, but it always interpret to uh, 30 frames, 30 frames, and you want to save your interpretation, you can see that there is this thing called remember interpretation. So first, I'm going to go to main. I'm going to set to 25. Okay, maybe loop this two times as well. Then click OK. Then I'm going to right mouse click, interpret footage again, and I'm going to activate remember interpretation okay so interpret and then remember interpretation okay now i'm going to bring in the wireframe so right mouse click import file so we go to wireframe 
Okay, I'm going to click any frame, then click in open. Okay, this one still interpret as 30 frames. Okay, let me apply. Okay, so the, I will use my previous interpretation and then I'll just go and apply. So automatically right now, it applies it to 25 frames per second. And we can actually bring in the three footages already. Okay, so we're going to bring in the gray scale first. Now, instead of putting on top, right, we're going to put it just under the diffuse. Then we are going to offset it right about halfway like this. Okay, sorry, my gray scale, I should be moving my gray scale. I move my gray scale about slightly beyond halfway like that. Okay, and then now my wireframe. I'm going to bring it just below the grayscale and then I'm going to offset this. Now the offset is very important. You want your vehicle right to dissolve smoothly against one another. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to exactly uh, half of this uh, animation. Then I'm going to scrub this the end of the animation until the last frame matches like that. You see that? Okay, and then the same thing for this one, the wireframe, I'm gonna move it until the first frame matches the last frame. Now in this case, right, the last frame of this footage is 300. Okay, so this one is very important. You need to align it until the first and the last frame matches. Okay, the reason why mine looks like this now is remember I interpret the footage to run two times. Okay, so right now, how do you transition between? Okay, let me just scrub this uh, into half again so that you can see the result here. So from here, first is the diffuse, then it jumps to the gray scale, then it jumps to the wireframe. Okay. Okay, so now we need, if you look at the wireframe, we have a problem. We do not want to show the wireframe like this. Okay, we want to actually composite it on top of a gray scale. So I'm going to bring in this gray scale image again. Now, if you want to bring in your footage precisely, uh, like exactly where you want the frame to start, you can scrub the timeline to the frame that you want the footage to come in. For example, here. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in another gray scale. And then I'm just going to bring it in here. Okay, and then you can scrub this until it reaches the end here. All right. Okay, for this one, we need to use a, uh, let's see. You can use a multiply. However, you, we must invert this wireframe of the layer first because Screen. Yeah. Okay, another one we can use is called screen. Let me see. Yeah. If you apply screen, now, now you can see the wireframe will change into white. Okay, but if you want the wireframe, okay, remember I'm putting the wireframe on top of a grayscale. And also I'm applying a filter. The filter of the layer can be applied on this box here under the mode. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna apply a uh, invert. Let's see. If you go to this filter search here, you can apply all sorts of filter to your layers. So we need to uh, apply invert because if you want the wireframe to appear black, we need to invert that layer. So I'm gonna select this layer and then I'm gonna apply a invert. Okay, so now you can see the wireframe has changed into this uh, grayish tone. Okay, not exactly black, but I think this is good enough to show the wireframe on the vehicle. Okay, so now we have all the three layers appearing one after another. However, it is very abrupt. That means it just 
boom, just changes within a frame. It's not very nice. You want it to transition. That means you want to uh, fade from one layer to another. So now we need to do some simple animation. We need to animate the opacity of the layer. You know what's opacity, right? You adjust the opacity, you control the transparency level of your object. So we're going to open up the first layer, this first layer on top. Click on the triangles, the drop down, okay, to open up the properties. Now we are going to extend. If you zoom in closer here, if you want your transition to happen over one second, so be, what is the frame rate of this composition? 25 frames per second, right? So if you want your transition to happen over one second, then you extend another 25 frames. But if you want your transition to be slower and smoother, let's say two seconds, 1,000, 2,000, two seconds, then we're going to extend 50 frames. So over here, we're going to grab and extend the tail end of this footage by another 50 frames. So I'm going to grab here, extend it to 50. Okay, while my, okay, while my uh, timeline slider is at 300, okay, I'm going to set a keyframe of the opacity at 100% by clicking on the stopwatch here. See, 100%. Then I'm going to scrub the timeline to 350. Then I'm going to, for your case, uh, because you guys are rendering 250 frames, uh, you'll be 300, uh, from 250 to 300. You don't have to follow exactly because uh, you can ex uh, adjust the duration of your transition. Okay, so at the opacity, go ahead and click on the numbers. If you notice, right, if I click on the numbers, a hand symbol will appear with two arrows. You can click on it and slide it to zero. And because the stopwatch is activated, you notice the two keyframes are done for you. So now, if I scrub the timeline, you can see it transition from one layer to another. Okay, right now, I think there is a one frame mismatch. I'm going to adjust the layer. Okay, right now, it's very difficult to adjust. So if you need to zoom in, there's a zoom tool here that allows you to zoom into your to individual frames. So I'm going to click on the slider and I'm going to zoom in. And then I can adjust. If you look closely, right, you can see my gray scale and my diffuse is off, is a bit misaligned. So I'm going to grab that, the gray scale and then I'm going to adjust. So when I zoomed in, right, it's much easier. Now, if you zoom in, you also notice that this, this bar here, <coughs> this bar here, is your zoom in navigation bar. Okay, if you click in the center of this bar, you can navigate at a zoom in level, okay, of the entire timeline. So this tool can be very useful. Now, if you want to zoom out again, you can grab the tail end and zoom to the left or zoom to the right. All right? And what about this one? This is actually the composition. Uh, bar here. This one basically states, okay, where do you want the comp uh, composition to begin and where do you want it to end? Okay, by default, I set this composition to 0 to 1000, so 0 is actually the beginning here. Okay, so let's check the transition now. You can see the transition is working and it looks much better. So I'm going to repeat the process for the other frame. Okay, coming down to here and I'm going to zoom in using the zoom uh, tool. Okay, so again, I'm going to extend this by maybe uh, 50 frames as well. And this time, I'm going to apply the opacity on this layer. So click on opacity to start the keyframe. Go to the final frame and change the opacity to zero. So now, you can see the grayscale will show the wireframe. Okay. Okay, I'm going to zoom back up now. So now you can preview the playback. Now, if you notice something about After Effects, right, you notice that it shows you these green dots. So, what does these green dots mean? 
Okay, these, these are not keyframes. Huh? These are actually the frames stored in the computer memory. So let's say if your computer has massive amounts of memory, let's say you have like 32 gigs of RAM, all right, you can fill up all this green. Okay, so you can preview by clicking on the preview playback button here. Okay, we can click on the preview button to play. What the computer does is that it render every single frame it throws to the memory. Render every single frame and throws to the memory. And you play back from your computer memory. But this is dependent on how much memory you have. If your computer don't have a lot of memory, it will only render up to like how much memory you have and then it will stop rendering. Then everything else you will try to play back by rendering in real time. So what is happening now is I click on the playback preview button. It tries to render all the frames and put it into memory. Then after that, it will try to play in real time. Okay, so this is what is happening right now. If you look at the, uh, the workspace window here, you can see that right now it's only rendered at half the resolution. You can actually adjust the resolution of the render that you want. If you don't have enough memory, you can bring it down to one quarter. Okay, well, I'll wait for this to finish rendering first. Because it's only rendering at half the resolution, the speed is faster. Okay, I think it's going to run out of memory soon. Or maybe not. Huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, because the instructor computer contains a lot of memory, so no problem. So you see, once it's finished, now it plays for you in real time. <coughs> so you can preview, okay, this is what it looks like in real time. <coughs> and then you can then check out your transition. You see whether is it okay or not, is there any strange uh, jitters or any, any snapping or whatever. Wireframe, yeah. Okay, so that means now you're ready to render. Okay, just now I mentioned that if your computer doesn't have enough RAM and you want to preview it, you can actually adjust the resolution. Right now it's rendering at half the resolution of Full HD. You can actually reduce this to quarter. Or sometimes you just leave it at auto. Lah, right? right now it's a set to automatic. <clears throat> so the computer will determine how much, or rather the software will determine how much memory you have and uh, make the adjustments automatically. Finally, one final touch. You need to put a title to your work. So we are going to create a title. So go over to the timeline bin here right mouse click click on new go ahead and click on text you want to create a new text okay so now the text is in the center you can actually start to type okay you can type your name okay in this case this is done by mr david and then you type the name the the name of the model uh, the car that you are you have modeled so this one is the honda what model is this huh? Okay, never mind. I'm just going to give an imaginary name. I can't remember. Okay. Honda CRV or whatever model. Okay. And if you create the text, you notice that the text is a little bit small, right? Then how do you change the size? Now, every time you create any elements, if you look to the right-hand side, right, you can find the properties of it. And if you still cannot access the properties of the text, you can always click on the drop-down and click on text. And you can also in more options for the text, okay? But if you want to change like character, positioning, size, font, you have to go over to the right-hand side here, this window here, the character window. So I'm gonna increase the size of the text because obviously it's too small. And then I'm gonna reposition the text. You can, if you look to the top here, you have a bunch of tools that's quite similar to Photoshop. There is this selection tool, pen tool, and zoom tool. So I'm going to use the selection tool. I'm going to grab and move the text to here. Okay, we have a problem right now. Because the background is white, we can't see the text. So we need to change the color of the text. So go ahead and click on the color swatch of the text and change it. Maybe I want to change it to some light grayish blue color. Okay. And 
this is a stroke color we don't really need a stroke okay you can go to the effects of the text let's see whether I can add any other stuff to it Okay, I'm going to leave it at, as it is, all right? Okay, I think this color is too similar to the model already. I'm going to select the text again, and I'm going to change it to another more contrasty color. Okay, and also I don't want this to end like that. Uh, it's a bit too abrupt. Huh? Well, actually you can, uh, because we're gonna, I'm gonna leave it at this, because if you do it like that, later when you bring into other software like Premiere, okay, you can dissolve it to your other 3D modeling project, which is the character model, which you all guys will start next week. All right. So we are ready to render. So how do you render? Now, to render, it is very important you check your project, the workspace uh, marker. If you look at this button here, this one will tell you where the first frame will be rendered and then the other one will tell you where the last frame is rendered. So if you go and adjust this, okay, what this means is that it's going to render up to here and then it's going to stop. Okay, although you still see everything, but this will specify where you want to render. So make sure that it fills up both ends. Okay? Now if for some reason you want to extend the composition length, you can actually click on the, the composition, your composition, and you can double click on it. Oh sorry, not double click, right mouse click and go to composition settings and you can change those values again. Alright? Oh, I forgot to show you. Actually, just now you don't have to create the white background. You can actually change the default color of the background when you create your uh, composition <coughs> so that your vehicle will show up properly. Okay, let's start to do the render. Go and click on File, Export, and choose this option, Add to Render Queue. Okay, Add to Render Queue. So File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and you will see that now you have a Render Queue window. Now the next few settings are very important, so make sure you set them correctly. Do not export it like that uh, by default, otherwise your computer will run out of space. Because if you export without compression, uh, your video size, even for a few seconds, will be massive. All right. So best settings, you can click on it. Usually you don't have to touch anything. Best settings, you leave it as it is, click OK. Output module, lossless, you have to change it to something that is more universal. <coughs> if you are using, if you are working on a Mac, generally it will be a MOV. But we are working on Windows, we are exporting it into an AVI container. Now, you all know what is AVI, <coughs> right? AVI, you see AVI, you know it's a video. But what really is an AVI? Think of AVI as a container. Okay, Apple uses a container which is MOV. Okay, so the AVI can be using something called a codec to compress the video. So right now, we have not specified the type of video because if you look at the format options here, it says none. That means your video will not be compressed using any uh, codecs. And that is not something you want to do because you end up with a massive, massive file. So we need to click on the button here, format options. And then we have to choose the video codec. Okay, right now, we are missing a bunch of codecs. Let's see. We need to change. Okay, because if you go to AVI right and click on uh, format options, the list of compressors are very limited. We have to change our format to something else, to H264. Okay, and then the format options, I think we can leave it as it is. Okay, so H.264 is the codec that is used for encoding uh, your YouTube videos or your Blu-ray videos okay, on uh, the Blu-ray discs or even streaming. Okay, 
So you can change the H264 and then that's it. You can click OK. Since there's no audio, we can leave that empty. Now, output 2. You have to click, like, where do you want to save this as? Now, when you, now, when you save it as H264, it's going to save a file as a .mp4 or MPEG4 format. All right. So make sure you export it to the location you want. Okay, for this example, I'm going to export it to the desktop. Okay, the name is fine because it's following the composition and I'm going to click save. Okay, once you're done, you can render already. So you can click on render button and then just wait. Now, of course, this render is not going to be as long as what you guys are rendering for your 3D. So you can see this is actually quite fast. So it's just going to take a few minutes. Depending on the speed of your processor, Mine is black just now. Mm. That's why it's not really seen. This one's on the white screen. Yeah. This is the same. I think the the later we can open we can open up another composition. You can re-import in the file again. I'll show you. Okay, we'll wait for this to finish rendering first. Now, all of you, I believe, have a Gmail account, right? Uh, by extension, if you have a Gmail account, you also have a YouTube account. So you are required, right, in the coming weeks, right, to upload all your footage, all your completed works like this onto your YouTube. Okay, it's best to compile them. Do not just up upload one video by <clears throat> one video. If you can, try to compile them together and then put it up. Because this will be used. Your YouTube links will be used as the way to showcase your modeling skills for potential employers to take you guys in for your internship. All right, so we have finished rendering. Let's see the final result. Okay, so you can see the file after compression is only 29.7 megabytes very small so you can double click on it to view it <clears throat> okay so this is the final result all right no this is not a recording i mean is there a recording for this yeah it's being recorded Okay, then it's going to transition to the wireframe. Okay, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to stop the recording. <coughs>